My name is Naomi Silverman. I'm 11 years old. I'm making this project with the help of my father and many other members of my family as a tribute to my great grandmother, Rita Rosen, who is one of our favorite people in the whole world. I was Rita's very first great grandchild, and I was very lucky to have her in my life during my early childhood. She always had lots of sweets at her house, and we would also go out to get them sometimes. One of my very favorite things in the whole world is candy. And I recently learned that Grandma Rita grew up in a candy store in Philadelphia in the 1930s. I also love being Jewish and doing all kinds of Jewish things. For this project, I wanted to learn about Grandma's history. What was her candy store like? What did she do in it? How did her family get into that business? Also, what was her family's Jewish life like? Did they have any interesting traditions or stories? To find out, I interviewed her nephew Bruce Schatz, her niece Robin Schatz, and read a family book made by her niece Rebecca Schatz of blessed memory. I hope you find the stories sweet. To tell my stories, I have to climb up my family tree on my father's side. Grandma Rita was my father's maternal grandmother. Her maiden name was Schatz, which is a German name with Yiddish origins. The name Schatz, spelled with Hebrew letters, is Shin and Sadi. Shin Sadi is an acronym that stands for Shaliach Tzibor, which means public emissary or cantor in Hebrew. Grandma Rita was born in 1927 as the daughter of Henry Schatz and Gertrude Singer in Philadelphia. A cantor married a singer. No wonder I turned out so musical. Henry's father, Rudolf Schatz, immigrated to the United States in 1885 at the age of 25. He came from a German area of the Russian Empire once called Kurland, now called Latvia. Rudolf was the first of his four brothers and four sisters to leave Kurland. Many Jews left that region in the 1880s due to a large increase in anti-Jewish violence. In his hometown of Frauenburg, Rudolf had been a mechanic and a metal worker. In America, he became a wholesale tobacconist and confectioner. His first storefront was on 133 West Girard Avenue in Philadelphia. In 1891, Rudolph married Anna Salwin and they had four children together. Henry was born in 1892 and was their only son. Grandma Rita's mother was named Gertrude Singer. Gertrude, or Gertie, was born in Philadelphia in 1892. Her father, Simon Singer, was born in Russia in 1861, and he became a U.S. citizen in Philadelphia on June 28, 1890. In the old country, Simon was a scholar. In America, he was a conductor on the last line of horse-drawn streetcars in Philadelphia. Gertie's mother, Rachel Aronson, was born in 1865 in Riga, which is now in the country of Latvia. Rachel ran a vegetable stand on Marshall Street to make money after Simon passed away. Marshall Street was a bustling open-air marketplace in the heart of the Philadelphia Jewish community. Between Poplar and Gerard Street, Jewish merchants set up pushcarts or worked in storefronts selling a variety of goods and services. Gertie would go to the Philadelphia docks early in the morning to buy vegetables for the stand. She was tough and she didn't take any mess from the men at the docks. Rachel and Gertie were very close and would go shopping together at the kosher butchers on Marshall Street. They'd come to Gertie's house afterwards and salt the meats to drain the blood, and Grand Marita would serve some tea. Rachel would indulgently give her little granddaughter Rita a ten-cent tip. According to her children and grandchildren, Gertie had an old saying for any occasion. Here are some of the most memorable ones. With enough sugar, you can even eat rocks. What can't be cured must be endured. If everyone put their troubles on a wall, you'd pick your own. If you want justice, you'll find it in the dictionary. Even a turtle has to stick its neck out to get ahead. Worry about what's in your head, because that's what makes the biggest difference. If life hands you a lemon, make lemonade. Cream always rises to the top. Henry and Gertie met when they were very small children, and Gertie became a childhood friend of Henry's sister, Lily. When they grew up, they got reacquainted and started dating.
One night, they were invited to a party out at the edge of town. They missed their trolley car, and Henry paid for a private taxi to take them to the party. They had a very nice time at the party. Afterwards, Gertie confided to her mother, Rachel, I don't think I could marry a man who is loose with his money like that. Rachel answered back, How would you feel if you had missed that party? Henry told this story often to his children and grandchildren to remind them that sometimes when it really matters to you, you can splurge. The value of money is determined by how you spend it. Henry and Gertie married on October 10, 1915 in Philadelphia. Henry was 23, working in his father's wholesale business. Gertie was 22 and had helped her mother at her vegetable stand for years. Henry's mother, Anna, felt that Gertie was not good enough to marry her only son. Their first child, Sylvia, was born in 1916 or 1917. Having a child exempted Henry from active duty in World War I. Instead, he worked in the Philadelphia shipyards. This photo is from his shipyard's badge. They had three more children, including Uncle Bert, Uncle Joe, and Grandma Rita. Henry and Gertie were married happily for over 50 years. We don't know how Rudolph started selling candy and tobacco products wholesale. By the time Henry was born in 1892, the business was thriving and the family was well-to-do. In the late 1920s, however, the Great Depression struck and his business went bankrupt. Henry took over the business to spare his father the shame. Henry and Gertie turned the business into a retail store and lived upstairs. By 1944, the Schatz family retail store was successfully turning a small profit. However, Rudolph had accrued a debt in 1930 with the Heidelberger Confectionery Company of Philadelphia, but had never been able to pay it back. The debt was for $520.87, which is about $7,500 in today's currency. Between November 1944 and April 1945, Henry paid down the entire debt of his father. The company wrote him a letter offering sincere thanks and commending his moral sensibilities. Honoring one's parents is one of the Ten Commandments. Henry wasn't a very religious man, but he fulfilled this mitzvah perfectly. Henry and Gertie's store was a general store, not a big supermarket and not a convenience store. The family lived upstairs from the store. The kids, Bert, Rita, and Joe, would come downstairs after school and help out with the store. They sold two types of candy in the store. One kind was rock candy, or crystallized sugar. The other kind was chocolates. The rock candy came in big chunks. A typical chunk was the size of a basketball. Bert and Joe had the idea that they could chip off pieces and eat it. They had a running competition for who could chip the biggest piece off without their parents noticing. Rita would watch them doing it and they'd have to bribe her with rock candy to keep her quiet. Once in a while, a shipment of chocolates would come in misshapen or crushed. Henry would melt down all of the confections, mixing the chocolate together with whatever fillings were inside. He would shape the mixture into cubes and resell them under the name Jureka Mix. Dreka Mix was our store's most popular candy. The customers would always ask for it. By the way, Dreka is a Yiddish word that means rubbish or trash. In addition to tobacco and candies, Henry and Gertie sold a variety of other goods and services in the store. Henry would go to Gaithersburg, Maryland and buy up whole ponds of goldfish. They'd load them into barrels and ship them back to Philadelphia. Sometimes the water would freeze on the way, but the fish survived in the ice and they'd sell them to kids at Phillies baseball games for five cents each. Once a year, they'd get in baby alligators to sell. People would buy them as pets and just let them loose in the sewer when they got too big to care for. Uncle Joe would occasionally put a baby alligator on a leash and walk it around the sidewalk just to see people's startled reactions. At Easter time, they'd get baby ducks at the store. They let the ducks wander around the store, quacking. Gertie was good at sewing, so she decided to make little diapers for the ducklings to prevent a big mess. They sold lots of other things in their general store, 
and the stories have stuck in the minds of their grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and beyond. Rita grew up the beloved little sister of Bert and Joe. As a young Jewish woman in Philadelphia, she was active in the B'nai B'rith Girls Organization. She graduated from Kensington High School in Philadelphia in 1943. After high school, she worked as a switchboard operator for AT&T. She married Harold Rosen on September 7, 1948, when she was 20 years old. They had two children, Reedy in 1950 and Robert in 1953. When Henry and Gertrude retired to Florida in the early 1950s, Harold and Rita moved down to North Miami Beach as well. Miami in the mid-1950s had a booming Jewish population, and the Rosens celebrated many simchas together with the Schatzes. Rini and Robert grew up and started families of their own. In 1975, Rita's first grandchild was born, my father, Jerome Henry. Gertie was there to happily welcome her great-grandson into the world. Today, Rita's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren live all over the United States. We were all so lucky to have Grandma Rita in our lives. We love her and miss her very much. This project was made as an entry into an international competition called My Family Story, which is hosted by the International School for Jewish Peoplehood Studies at Beit HaTfutzot, the Museum of the Jewish People. We participated through a series of workshops held at the Contemporary Jewish Museum in San Francisco, California. My father and I worked together to interview relatives, do research, write scripts, collect and edit images, record audio and music, and assemble the final videos in the interactive ebook. We made the 11 videos using a simple, free storytelling app called Spark Video. We also visited a 104-year-old confectionery in San Jose, California to do research and gather the visual materials that you see in this project. Grandma Rita loves the land of Israel and visited a number of times during her life. The opportunity to tell her story as part of the larger story of the Jewish people is something she would have felt very proud and happy to do.